In the years before the financial crisis of 2008, the rich world was floating on a wave of private debt. Cheap credit made it easy for people to spend beyond their means, and mortgage regulations were relaxed. Financial institutions got increasingly reckless, and banks lent billions for more and more houses. An elaborate house of cards had been constructed, and each risky bet was stacked on top of another. Warren Buffett, the world's third richest man, called some of these risks financial weapons of mass destruction. Speculators gave markets the jitters, house prices started to plummet, and homeowners began to default. When the housing bubble burst, a chain reaction meant the whole edifice collapsed. The world was plunged into recession, and people lost jobs, pensions, savings, homes. But yet again, we're getting tied down in debt. Governments bailed out banks and borrowed even more to engineer a recovery. But this didn't fix things. It just kicked the can down the road. As corporate cash piles once again soar, so too has the rate of inequality. In the race for greater profits, and with mounting pressures from outsourcing, streamlined workforces, and new technology, wages have stagnated. And as incomes shrink and bills go up, the only way to close the gap is for households to take on more debt. Predatory lending, frequently targeting the poor, less educated, minorities, and the elderly, has pushed some into debt and even bankruptcy. The total amount of debt in the world is now more than three times greater than global GDP, and a new tsunami of debt is heading our way. Yet some, the super rich, are actually seeing their debts fall the 400 richest Americans now own more wealth than the bottom 150 million combined. And internationally, the richest 85 people in the world control as much as the poorest half of the global population. Just 85 people. That's roughly the number who could fit on a double-decker bus. As the rich get richer, the rest of us sink even deeper into debt. This is no coincidence. In 2011, the first Occupy protests began. One of their slogans was, capitalism isn't working. And the star economist, Thomas Piketty, agreed. Piketty's shown that for those at the very top of the income scale, it's incomes from capital, not earnings, that predominate. In other words, it's better to have the right parents or in-laws than the right job. Because inherited wealth will always grow faster than earned wealth. Piketty calls the skyrocketing pay at the top a drift towards oligarchy. Vast income inequality isn't an accident. It's a feature of capitalism itself. In the U.S., as the super-rich get richer, the middle class shrinks, and an increasingly large minority is stranded in poverty. What we see isn't a flaw or a blip, it's the system working. And the twin spheres of rising inequality and debt it's produced today are the same factors that caused the crisis only a few short years ago. Without a different, more democratic kind of social and economic architecture, we risk it all happening again. Only this time, it could be even worse. The too big to fail banks are bigger, and the debts even larger. The economic squeeze on people even harder. The system is a threat to democracy itself and the next crisis could unleash more social unrest, protests, and strikes. The next bloodbath in the markets could extend to the streets. <laughs>